Hello everybody, this is Chris back again with The Ancient Scholar. But today I'm just going to go ahead and go through an actual setup of a ventilator and uh, kind of take you guys through uh, what we're actually looking at in the lab for initial setup. So here's a situation, we'll just uh, do a scenario and we'll, we'll take it all the way through. So the situation is the following. You have a 27-year-old male patient who's involved in a motor vehicle accident. He was on a motorcycle, ran... Um, a, into the uh, side, side impact collision of another vehicle. He was ejected from the motorcycle, took a roll, has a severe closed head injury, and uh, multiple um, appendicular uh, skeletal injuries as well, so multiple uh, fractures of the legs and arms. So he presents to your emergency room. He's uh, unresponsive and apneic, and uh, paramedics are currently uh, bagging him with a bag, mouth, bag mass device. They um, are administering an FiO2 of 100% or 1, and um, his uh, uh, cardiovascular and hemodynamic status is, is otherwise, um, uh, uh, quote-unquote, stable at this point in time. It's nothing you have to worry about. And uh, the physician is uh, currently intubating the patient. You've been asked to set up the ventilator. Patient is five foot nine inches tall. He's a male. Okay, so step one: determine the need for mechanical ventilation. Does this patient meet criteria for mechanical ventilation? Absolutely. He's apneic. He's unresponsive. He cannot protect his own airway. Uh, we clearly have indications for mechanical ventilation. Step one: we've already decided we need to initiate it. Step two: get my equipment ready. And uh, obviously, I can't show you the whole ventilator here. I'm just kind of focusing on the screen right now. But uh, I do have the ventilator set up. I have an HME on the tubing. I have it hooked to oxygen. Um, so my equipment is ready, and you just kind of hopefully have to take my word for that. <coughs> um, and if you can see here, it asks me, do I want to start pre-use checks? Yes or no. I'm actually going to hit no here, but this is the point where I would actually do the SST. The SST takes several minutes to do. Uh, so what we'll do at this point in time is uh, we'll just do a little Gedanken, um, exp a little, little um, Gedanken exercise and pretend that we actually did do the SST. If I wanted to do the SST in this ventilator, the Maquette Servo I, I'd simply hit yes and it would tell me to go through a, a series of steps. At this point I'm gonna say no. Okay. And I will delete all the, the prior data on that ventilator. It's currently in standby, so step two is done. Step three, I need to decide what type of ventilation I'm going to do. In this case, I'm going to start off in volume control. I've decided that's a type of ventilation. Next, I need to decide on the mode of ventilation. I'm going to select volume control, and I'm going to say, well, I want to go ahead and start off in um, uh, assist control, volume control which in the servo eye is simply volume control, and that is assist control. All right, next thing I need to do is I need to decide on my settings. All right, in the uh, four primary settings that we need to look at, we need to look at tidal volume, we need to look at respiratory rate, we need to look at PEEP, we need to look at FiO2, and these are the four critical settings that we need to do. So I need to go ahead and calculate my ideal body weight. Well, we know the patient is five foot nine inches tall, he weighs 120 kilograms. I cannot base my weight off of his, act, his actual weight. I have to base my volume off of ideal body weight, so I'm going to use the ideal body weight formula. He's 5 foot 9. So, and he's a male, so I'll use 106 plus 5 times 9. 106 plus 5 times 9, that's 45. 45 plus 106 is 151. That gives, 151 divided by 2.2 gives me an ideal body weight of 68 kilograms. Okay. At this point, um, uh, I know that my initial uh, volume is going to be 8 to 12 milliliters per kilogram of ideal body weight. I'm going to go ahead and I could start off at 10 if I wanted to. To make the math easy, that'd be 680 milliliters. But I'm going to just go ahead and start off a little on the low side at 8 milliliters per kilogram. Certainly acceptable. And that'll be about 550 milliliters. So I'm going to go ahead and select my tidal volume. And that'll give me 550 milliliters. All right, next, respiratory rate. Normal respiratory rate is between 8 and 12 breaths per minute. I'll go ahead and start off at 10 breaths a minute. PEEP, anywhere from 0 to 5. I'll go ahead and keep it at 5. FiO2, remember the FiO2 starts at whatever the patient was on prior to intubation, or less than 60 if you can help it. 
Well, in this case, the patient is being bagged by paramedics at 100% FiO2, so I'm going to start my initial FiO2 at um, 100%. All right, and then I'll go ahead and talk about a couple of the other settings. So the additional critical settings are out of the way. The additional settings, my inspiratory time. Inspiratory time of 0 0.9 seconds is normal for an adult. Um, my pause, I'm going to go ahead and turn my pause off. I don't need that quite yet. That's for plateau pressure. Um, my rise, we'll talk about rise time in, in another video. My trigger flow. Remember that if I was going to do flow triggering, you want to start right around 2 liters per minute, or if I go to pressure, I'd be negative 2. So we'll keep it at 2 liters per minute on flow. And this is for triggering. And then I go ahead and look at my IDE ratio here, 1 to 5. My minute ventilation is 5.5 liters per minute, and my flow is 40 liters per minute all of which are good or normal for the, a standard adult patient. I'm going to go ahead and hit accept. And as I'm ready to go ahead and initiate ventilation, we'll go ahead and transition over to my patient. You guys actually can't see what I'm doing here. I'm just hooking this into a, an artificial lung. And then I'm going to go ahead and initiate ventilation. Then what do I need to do? Well, I need to go ahead and I need to see how my patient is doing and look at my alarms. Initiated mechanical ventilation. I could also set my, could have set my alarms before initiating ventilation. I'm going to go ahead and set my alarms now that I have initiated ventilation. Okay, so my peak pressure is about 28. I'll go ahead and silence that alarm. My peak pressure is at 28. I know that. And my minute ventilation is going to be around 5.5. So I'm going to go ahead and go into my alarm profile. And my high pressure, I want 10 above. So I'm going to go ahead and set that at 38. My minute ventilation, well, I'm starting at 5.5. I want to go uh, 10 to 15% above and below. Uh, to, so 10% of 5 liters is going to be 500 milliliters. So I'm going to go ahead and do um, 4.5. And then I'm going to go ahead and do six for my upper. And with the knowledge that I may have to change this at another time. Okay, respiratory rate, 10 above and 10 below. The rate that I set was uh, 10 breaths a minute. So in this case, I'll set my low at about five or six, since 10 below would be zero. Um, I don't ever want to have my respiratory rate uh, backup rate less than six if I can help it. Uh, my upper rate is at 10 and I'm going to go 10 above that. That'll put me right about 20. Uh, this has indexpiratory pressure option and we can talk about that later but that's not one of the basic alarms. And then a part of the alarm setting of course are my apnea parameters. Apnea parameters are pre-built into this machine. Um, they're good to go and I would have known that um, when I did the SST because I would have gotten an alarm. I'll go ahead and accept and then continue to monitor my patient, do a physical exam, listen to breath sounds, vital signs, I want to get an ABG within 30 minutes, assess my pressures, and see how my patient's doing. Okay guys, that's a basic uh, ventilator setup. Hopefully you found that uh, rather helpful, and hopefully that'll help uh, when you have to do your um, initiate mechanical ventilation competency in lab. Uh, take care guys.